welcome to the first certified protection professional tutorial. I, it's the first um, virtual. In fact, previously I conducted an uh, in-person CPP tutorial before, but this is the first time I'm running an online a virtual CPP tutorial. Of course, I have also previously conducted CPP review program. Oh. So this is a one hour session from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And the topics I will co be covering today, overview of the seven CPP domain knowledge. And I will talk about security industry standards, which is one of the uh, uh, deep dive into one of the seven domain knowledge under security principles and practices. Then lastly, I will share with you six tips to pass CPP exam in 90 days. Okay, so to start off, let me do a short introduction about Security 4.0, the company which is host, hosting this event. Security 4.0 Private Limited is a new startup which was formed in 2019. This company provides security training and consultancy services. And Security 4.0 is also an ACES International Preferred CPE provider. I guess many of you should know ACES International, right? ACES International is the world's largest non-profit security management associations with its HQ based in the United States. It has also got the chapters in Singapore, uh, Bangkok, the Philippines, um, Nigeria. I'm not sure about that. Is there the ACES chapter there? Probably our friends can let us know. I think we have uh, Lawrence Bayon. Right. So what is the preferred CPE provider? Basically, um, Security 4.0 runs training program that is in a way on endorsed by ACES International. We issue certificate with endorsement by ACES International and uh, CPP or any of the certification holders from ACES International can earn CPE points, CPE credits, which is the continuing professional education credits. So that, that is a bit of background about Security 4.0. Now I'm, I'm going to just ask quickly ask you, you guys, how many of you are ACES members? Thank you. Thank you for joining, joining in the poll. I think about half of you are ACES members here, right? Uh, the reason why I'm asking this so is so that I, I can better contextualize um, my sharing later on. For those who are already ACES members, probably will already have more insight into the information I've shared, like the access to some of the standards and guidelines. But for the rest of you, I, I will still provide this information as a baseline. Thank you. So let me continue on. Oh, first, let me give you an overview about CPP. Right? So what is CPP? CPP basically is considered a gold standard for security management professional. So what it does is validates your knowledge in seven domains of security management which I will come to it later on, I will be sharing with you in more details. Now, if you are keen to take up these security management certifications, you will then also need to have an eligibility requirements uh, comprising mainly seven to nine years of uh, security experience, seven years if you have got a degree, and uh, nine years if you don't have a degree. And out of these seven to nine years of security experience, Three, three years of which you need to be in charge of the security functions. So you probably could be like a security manager, a security supervisor. And the exam is up to four hours. Okay? There are a total of up to 225 questions. So why two, up to 225 questions? Because there are 200 sc scorable questions. Right? That means you'll be scored on these 200 questions. The other up to 25 questions are basically test questions which the ACs use it to test out the questions before 
they use it as scorable questions in future exam. Therefore, you have up to two to five questions and you have to complete it in four hours. Now, the certification is managed by ACES International, as I shared earlier on. ACES International was founded in 1955, so it has been around for many years. It is one of the longest established security associations in the world. Now, also note that the certification program by ACES International is uh, accredited uh, by ANSYS. ANSYS basically means uh, American National Standard Institute, okay, which is uh, against the ISO 17024. Now, what is 17024? It is a personnel certification body. So any organization in the world that want to issue certifications and they want to stand out from the rest of the organization, they obtain this ISO 17024. So look around at some of the other organizations that issue certifications. You can check whether do they have ISO 17024. And actually many of them do not have. So ACES is one of the organizations that has uh, embarked on ISO in its early years and has been around for many, many years. So of course, other organization, organizations are trying to level up by also coming on board these ISOs, 17024. So next, let me give you an explanation about what is certification versus certificate programs. Eh? Some, some people may not be aware of that. So let me start off with certifications. Now certification basically refers to individuals meeting predetermined standards or criteria. So it is normally administered by the third party organizations who manage this program. So example like ACES International. And it is normally also a time limited credential recognition. So it means uh, it's not forever. Like you go for education, you pass your exam a degree, it's forever there. Whereas for certifications, it's not. Usually, it's time limited. For example, one year, three years. And in the case for ACES, certification programs is three years. So what happens is every three years, then you have to renew it through uh, um, continuing professional education credits. Like I just mentioned earlier on. So to obtain these certifications, there is a eligibility requirements, like I shared earlier on in terms of uh, like seven to nine years of experience, right? Now in the past, there are people who have asked me, hey, I don't have seven to nine years of experience, so can I take this, this CPP? Now, a few years ago, my answer to that is no, you can't. Because this is a CPP, is a stringent, uh, has got a stringent require, requirements there. You need some experience, and ACES has set it at seven to nine years. But the good news is last year, ACES International has started this new certification program, which you can see on the bottom right-hand corner there, the logo, the APP, Associate Protection Professional. This is for security professional who has got lesser number of years of experience. So consider the more junior. You still can come on board um, to get a certification through APP. And later on, a uh, few years later, when you get more experience, you can then go for a CPP exam. Right? So basically, to get the certification, you have to sit through the exam, as I shared earlier on. Okay, so AC has got four certification programs. But today, I will be focusing on CPP. I will be sharing with you more about the, the, the content of it, what to learn. So comparing to a certificate program, the certificate program are just like uh, any normal certificate of completion, certificate of attendance, which there are many, many organizations who run training and courses. And these programs, normally they do not require assessment. They sit through, basically it just requires probably like 75% attendance. But of course, some of them will require some form of assessment. Now, once you get the certificate, you get to keep your certificate forever. That is normally the case. So like example, one of the certificate program that I run is called Outcome-Based Security Contract. I attend the program, a one-day program. Uh, you get the full attendance. The attendees will get a certificate of uh, completion or certificate of attendance. And this is normally less stringent than a certification program. So these, these are uh, the differences between a certification versus a certificate programs. I hope this will give you some baseline understanding
Okay. So at this point in time, if you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to type inside the chat. I will try my best to answer those questions as I move along. Right. Yeah. right. Next, I will be doing another poll. This is another important question I, I need to ask you. Just let me launch the poll. Now, which of the following best describes your current job functions? Okay. Which of the following best describe your current job functions? Physical security, which uh, includes like security operations, security systems. Let's say you are doing uh, security systems, SI, you can select the first one. Or you are doing personnel security. Now you can select multiple because many of us, I know you have you wear multiple hats. Right? Personnel security, wow, okay. I think I'm seeing all the response coming in. Eight out of 12. Okay, you are right, almost there. Let me end the poll. Are you all still in? Okay, I will end the poll. Let's take a look at the results. Oh, interestingly, right, or uh, not surprisingly, most of us are in the physical security. I think that's, that's the reason why you're also here to listen to this CPP tutorial. So you can see here, almost every one of you are involved in uh, physical security work, whether security operations or systems. Whereas the rest of the percentage, you can see here, the next uh, biggest is uh, personnel security, then followed by crisis management, uh, investigations, um, information security, of course, is lesser, yes, and others, there could be some other rules, right? Thank you for your participation. Now, bear this in mind, these five areas of work, because the domains which I'm going to share with you are all related to these five areas of work. Okay. Hey, by the way, if you think there's anything useful that I'm sharing, you want to do a screenshot, uh, go ahead, I'm not stopping you. And you find this is uh, useful, this polling, poll results, because uh, what I'm going to share with you next, the uh, domain knowledge will be related to this poll. I ask you this question is because it's going to be related to what I'm going to share with you. Now, this is the seven domain knowledge. So what are the seven domain knowledge? Firstly, is the security principles and practices, followed by the business principles and practices. Now, the next five domains, you'll find it very familiar because early on, the poll questions I asked you, right? Investigation, personnel security, physical security, information security, and crisis management. Right? Many of you have actually uh, selected the physical security. Now look at the percentage here. The percentage refers to the, the, the importance of this domain. And how does ACS reflect this in the CPP exam? It is reflected by the number of questions that you will have. So as I mentioned just now, there, were, there, there, were, there are 200 scorable questions in the CPP exam, right? So 25% of the 200 questions, meaning uh, physical security, there will be 50 exam questions from physical security aspect. So most of you are already in the physical security. And if you are already very familiar, then uh, I would say good, good to you because then 25% of work probably is already almost done because you are doing it day in, day out. So when you prepare for the exam, it probably is easier. But if you have not selected, say, for investigations or crisis management, let's say you have not selected these two items early on, that actually forms 100%, um, 10 plus 10, that is 20%. And it's really, if this topic is really new to you, then you probably have to focus, put more effort into this 20% of the study because you will be expecting 20% of questions, which is 20%, uh, which is 40 questions will appear in the CPP exam on these two topics, investigations and crisis management. Okay, so this is how it works. Now, then why is it that these five domains have been selected to put into CPP? This is because the ACES, the Professional Certification Board, they have done through all this research throughout the years and they actually review this every five years and they update these domains. So this percentage 
number you see here will uh, change over the years because it depends on the feedback the research done with the members okay but lastly the numbers did not change much okay okay so some someone asked the questions i think wendy asked the question the key difference between cpp and and psp well, that's a very, very good question. Often people who want to decide to take up a certification program with um, ACs, they'll be asking, so should I take CPP or PSP? Now, as you can see here, CPP comprises of seven domains. So you go into things like information security, investigations. You can see it is wider scope. Now, for most security management professionals, when they take on their role, they are expected to do a lot of things. And they are probably expected to do uh, several of these domains areas. Now, where else for a PSP physical security professional, it focuses on one area, which is physical security. So one of the seven CPP domains here is a physical security, right? So PSP focus mainly on that. Okay, so that is the key difference. So if you are, say, example, a SI, system integrator, normally when system integrator come to me and say, hey, I want to take up a certification program, then my advice to them is, are you open to uh, learning more things, investigations, information security? Um, do you see yourself moving into that area? If yes, then of course I encourage you to go for CPP because generally CPP are more well sought after more well organized. Um, if then investigation information security and uh, some of the other domains is not something you do, then go focus on PSP. Because PSP really focus on all the physical security aspects. It covers things like physical security assessments. They talk about the various security measures, mitigation measures, implementation project managements. So if you are SI, you can go for PSP. If you are just doing physical security work, you can go for PSP. Uh, of course, in a way, you can say it could be easier to pass because you're, you, you are just focusing on just a physical security aspect. That's a CPP, you got to study more areas. So it depends on, on you. Okay, personnel security. I think Inksham asked me a question uh, personnel security. I, I will be coming to that. Okay, so I think there's some background noise. Uh, I'm just letting the noise go. Now, next, let me talk about the role of security manager first. Now, this is taken from the source uh, called protection of assets. Now, for any one of you who want to take, take up this uh, CPP exam, one of the important sources is the protection of assets. It is the main study reference materials. And in it, uh, there are a total of eight books. So one of the book is called the security management. So in it extracted this important statement. Security managers are, as the name suggests, are both security specialists and business managers. So you need to know all about the technical things like physical security, like uh, what is security systems, all the technical things. And at the same time, you need to be a business manager. Business manager means uh, you need to know a bit about things like the budget, finance, all these things. Now, most of the protection of assets are uh, focuses on security specific issues. Uh, right? However, to serve the uh, organizations effectively, security managers must also understand business principles. Now, I highlight this important statement is because uh, many people, many security managers are very technical, okay? they are specialists. But if you really want to move up the, the ladder, your corporate ladder, you have to prepare to take on this business human uh, knowledge. Right. So that is exactly why early on you see two of the domains. One of it uh, is the business principles and practices. Right. So we will be talking more about that shortly. 
Okay, so firstly, I will talk about the, the, the security principles and practices. I notice the percentage is 21%, which means it's also very important. The highest number, if you remember earlier on, was physical security, right? You still remember how many percent? Actually, 5%, which is almost one quarter. Now, the next more, most important one will then be these security principles and practices, which is 21%. Now, what is principles and practices? In most of our studies, uh, anywhere where you go for your education programs, you will learn about principles, right? Business principles, marketing principles, any studies you go, you have to learn the principles. So same here, in CPP, there's uh, important principles and practices is the security principles and practices. So what is principles? Principles refers to the fundamentals, the basics. Okay, so we will talk about the uh, fundamentals basic in, in this uh, domain. Then practices. Practices are the common habits, the actions, things that the security practitioner is doing on the ground. So we'll be talking about these concepts, theories, and also what people do on the ground. So that makes up 21%. And what does it include? These are the five broad areas that is covered in the security principles and practices. First is security programs. In any protection program in any organization, the most important thing is the security program. The security program puts everything together. So you have to help the organizations to put up a, a organization's uh, security program to protect your assets. Okay, that, that is the goal of these security programs. Okay. Next is the security risk assessment. I'm sure many of you have now heard about it in the past few years, uh, the emphasis on risk assessment. Any security protection program, uh, assess pro protection program, you need to start off with risk. Because no point spending $10,000 to protect a $1,000 assets. Okay? This is basically the most simplified version of understanding security risk assessment. You probably want to spend $10,000 to protect a $100,000 assets. So we need to cover the concepts of a qualitative, quantitative risk assessment here, the threat vulnerability impact. So these are things that will be covered in security risk assessment process. Audit review assessments, this talk about things like conducting uh, CBA cost benefit analysis. And then there are many things that is covered here like the audits public private partnership, which is very important. <coughs> Our most private organization will have to work closely with the public organizations like the authorities, the police. So we we'll talk about public private partnership here also. Then the last thing is security awareness programs. And it's gaining more attractions, more importance, especially uh, in recent years, we also talk about the threats of this information security. Therefore, security awareness is very important. Okay, so how do we go about creating security awareness program? Who are the target audience? What's the means to run security awareness program? So all these will be covered in the security principles and practices. That's uh, for the first domain. Then I'll move on to the second domain, which is the business principles and practices. As I shared with you the earlier slides, we need to be business manager. So if you want to take on the CPP certification, then you need to learn about business principles. Of course, if you take the PSP, yeah, what Wendy was asking regarding PSP, right, then you don't need to learn about this. And you focus on physical security, the technical part of it. So in business principles, then you have to learn about budgets and finance because uh, most of you who, who is in this role, security manager role, you'll be tasked to work out the budget, yearly budget, the five years budget, how you want to spend money for your security program, right? for your manpower. So you have to work out the budgets and you have to look at how do you address the challenges of the inflations, the, the regulations, um, things that is happening around the world, the environment factors. And you have to work out a budget that is uh, able to support your organization's bottom line. Then we will talk about policies, procedures, or SOP that will support your organizations um, uh, in achieving its uh, objectives. Productivity, right? We, we have to think of ways on how to continuously improve ourselves. We cannot be just having uh, spending 
ten thousand uh, dollars uh, today, and then five years down the road, we are still spending ten thousand dollars to achieve the same thing. Because then you don't achieve productivity in this economy, current economy. Every country is talking about improving productivity. So your organization will be talking about improving productivity, and this will be then driven down to every department, including security. Staffing personnel development. How do we do recruitment? How do we do training for our security officers? And so this will be also covered here. Ethics. Well, wow, the kind of ethics, ethical behavior that the security personnel should have. And the last one is advice. We refer to the security manager playing an advisory roles to the uh, your your colleagues, your counterparts in the organizations. Uh, many stakeholders will require the advice of a security. For example, if there's an owner, the the warehouse owner, the logistic owner who's going to run their operations, they will need advice to how to protect. The assets there, the goods there, in terms of like the transportation, the the storage, and the logs. You know? so they are not the experts. Still, they will be looking to the security managers for advice. So that is where our role also come in, providing advice. So this will be covered over this domain, thirteen percent of it. Then investigations. Of course, some may not do it. But generally, uh, if there is there is any other security specialist in organizations, I think the security person will be the best to to take on this role of investigation. It can be any investigation. You know? It can be your internal investigations uh, related to HR, related to the code of conduct, or it can be even related to some form of uh, uh, criminal related or civil related. So we'll look at the investigative functions. It will also support the organizations in terms of the like collections and preservations uh, of evidence, right? There, there will still be evidence, right? So uh, this evidence either can be used for your internal or probably even to support the law enforcement surveillance process. So depending on what you need to do, what what is this uh, uh, investigation case about? You may need to do some form of surveillance process, surveillance work. So how do you go about surveillance? Then of course the actual conduct of the investigations, and another important topic is the interviews. How do you conduct investigative interviews? Um, interview first versus uh, interrogations, right? So what are some of the uh, techniques used? Okay, talking about uh, um, uh, behavior, verbal, non-verbal cues. All this has to be covered here. Then lastly, is to talk about supporting criminal or civil proceedings. So that's for investigations. Okay. So no, investigation is not part of PSP. So personnel security. Uh, what is personnel security? Early on, Eng Shung asked regarding this question. So personnel security covers these three things here. Background investigations. Now, if your organizations conduct background investigations for hiring new hires or, or for promotions, right? So, uh, and they, they ask you to help to do this, then this is like a background investigation task that you'll be doing. Now, of course, some HR will outsource it. Some will get their internal security department to do, do all these background investigations. How do they do it? I mean, it can be through open source or it can through various uh, platform online. You can actually grab the uh, credit reports, credit bureau reports. There's many different ways to do it. But this could be one of the functions done by security. Oh, then the next topic is the workplace violence. Now, workplace violence is because we are talking about personnel, the people in the office. So how do we handle all this workplace violence? So there's also a standard released by ACES International on this workplace violence and active assailant. It, it just, uh, just, in fact, just one or two weeks ago, it's, it released an updated versions of the workplace violence standards. And the last one is executive protections. Also, there are some organizations, the security departments is uh, asked to uh, do executive protections. So this is covered here. So basically, this this is all the things that will be covered in personnel security. Okay, so uh, that will address In Shung's earlier questions.
let me move on physical security physical security is pretty much similar to PSP it covers uh, everything related to physical security so we start with uh, assessment first so in in this domain you call it security service how to conduct the security service understand the existing gaps you have to understand the existing gaps first before we move on to the next step which is the security strategies what are the various strategies to mitigate the identified vulnerabilities okay the service will help you to identify identify vulnerabilities then the next step is the strategies what are the various mitigation strategies you will learn about all this in in this second part then after you have do, done all the implementations uh, you have to look at the testing and monitoring is it effective or not um here also we talk about preventive maintenance okay or the corrective maintenance so there's many things covered you can see 25 percent although there's only three simple points i listed here but it's actually there's a lot of things and it's quite technical here so if i in for the technical the specialist this will be for you you will um, try here right information security this is also an emerging important topic because uh, in the past many years we have seen many more cases of uh, information security threats right people want to get uh, uh, informations from the organization they want to steal information proprietary information intellectual property so information security is very important so you also start off with a risk assessment you notice risk assessment is kind of like a common denominator across many of these um, domains so in information security there's also a survey a risk assessment to be done then we look at the various policies and procedures uh, to put all these to protect all the informations the last part is talking about integrated security program now information security cannot just rely on it system computer system to protect those information that sits in the it system you need things like physical security you need the people component part of it therefore there's this integrated security program and it forms nine percent of the role of um, the security managers now why only nine percent because some many organizations they could have a dedicated it security information security personnel right? so uh, you form only nine percent for most of our physical security personnel here crisis management another ten percent so here we talk about four key areas uh, mitigations measures what, what are some of the mitigation measures that we need to do uh, preparedness how to really prepare for the crisis getting ready the uh, uh, items purchasing the item conducting training and the last two is really uh, when the things happens how do you respond you should already have an incident uh, management or incident response plan so that will talk about the response uh, of course the last is the recovery after all these things happens how do you quickly resume back the operation the business so that the organization can continue to bring in revenue and profit for the organizations Okay, so that is for crisis management okay so all these information the knowledge you can learn it from the protection of assets so if you want to learn about prepare for cpp you have to get this protection of assets poa you can buy it from acsonline.org this is the website you should go to get all the information now of course one of the problem is you will realize the seven domains does not match exactly to the the menu here right you see uh, there, there isn't a personnel security volume here now the personnel sec security content is scattered over this few books so you have to read uh, from all the various books right and uh, you can find it in like example in investigations because personnel security we talk about background investigations right so you'll find the volume the book on investigation there's one part that talks about background investigations Okay. okay let me just quickly address a few questions uh, I, oh, I, I can see there's many interests uh, let me do my best to answer the questions I still got quite a number of slides 
Okay, there's this question from Nicholas Reeds. Um, just remember investigation in real world answer always exactly to the book top method like many things. I'm ex-police and can assure you that sometimes the real world gets in the way of textbook. Absolutely, I agree. Okay, regarding the questions on, on investigations. Uh, okay, by John, all right? So John also asked, how could, what would be the best way to brush out on skills for investigations? Right, I, I would say in general, not just for investigation, for the whole CPP, here we are really testing about your knowledge, domain knowledge. So it's not necessarily, uh, uh, it's a test of your skills. Okay? You will understand about various techniques, for example, or how to conduct an investigation, interview versus interrogations, but nothing compared to doing it, practicing it on the ground. CPP does not, uh, the CPP exam will not be able to validate. Hence, for what we ask for in terms of eligibility is you need to have seven to nine years of experience. So, basing on that, um, hopefully you have got gained some relevant experience from there, right? So it is not a skills-based program where right? you will be tested to demonstrate how you conduct an interview or investigations. So this is really largely testing your knowledge of concepts. So I hope that will clarify the that that uh, questions the doubt. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, let me try to. Uh, is the POA updated from time to time? Okay, so ACS International will review the contents okay, and will update the, the, the books from time to time. Yes, every few years, it will update the, the contents. Okay, so let me just move on first. Huh? Um, benefits of standards. So I'm going to talk about standards now. Okay, security industry standards. Okay, let me try to admit another drive first. Now, I have picked up security in industry standards because this is actually one of the very interesting and important topics. So, uh, I think there are people dropping out connection. Let me just add them in again. Uh. Now, security in industry standards uh, is relevant to the security principles and practices. Earlier on, I talked about it, right? Remember, there is this part I mentioned about you need to uh, develop a organization security programs uh, to protect your organization assets, right? So that is one of the tasks. So there are many tasks which you need to learn, to, to understand. So for each of these tasks, there are knowledge. So for you to develop an uh, organization security program, some of the knowledge you need to know is about security industry standards. In fact, when you do your physical security, you also need to know the industry standards. When you do your crisis management, you also need to know about the industry standards because you have to make reference benchmarks to these standards. Therefore, this is an important topic that I'd like to share today. So what is standard? So standard is basically voluntary. So it's not mandatory. It doesn't mean that an organization must take up the standards. It's up to you which standards you want. And it's probably depending on the security manager or the senior management, they feel that this is a standard they want to adopt. Okay. So organizations conform to standards. Okay. So this is one of the key what we talk about when, when we refer to standards is conform. Whereas in regulations, uh, law uh, authorities may say, okay, in order to, for example, do the supply chain, um, to comply to the supply chain requirements, then there's this requirements to uh, uh, comply with certain standards. Okay. Compliance means you must do it, you must follow that. Else, Conformations is really depending on your organization. Say you want to decide to take on an ISO 9001, that's for example. Okay, it's really up to the organizations. Okay, so companies want to take out, uh, adopt standards because of various reasons, and these are some of the benefits. So, like codified best practices, there are many best practices, example, for security practices, right? You want to uh, develop some security measures for organizations. So you will want to do some benchmark. And the way to do some benchmarking is to look at standards, what the standard says, so that uh, it is uh, based on best practices, what many other organizations are doing. 
Like standards also include shared les lessons and the lessons that other people have uh, learned over the years, they have actually codified it into the standards. So it provide a measurement, uh, standard provide a measurement methods, okay, a standardized measurement of methods, define design performance requirements. So example, we want to talk, talk about uh, things like crash ratings. Uh, many of us, uh, or rather in some, some organizations, you want to put in some uh, uh, crash barriers to protect your, your property, right? So what kind of uh, uh, protections, what kind of ratings do you need? So there are ratings like the ASTM. I think many of you probably will have uh, used some of this, right? Then define methods for identifications of individuals. This probably will help in like the CCTV cameras and when you design a CCTV cameras or when you're selecting the specifications for your CCTV cameras, then we can refer to some of these standards. Because last, lastly, uh, provides consistency of services. So this is like, for, for example, um, for an organization that want to adopt some um, management services, management systems, uh, like the ISO 9001. Organization may want to adopt ISO 9001. So this demonstrates to the customers and clients that your service, your processes uh, is consistent. Uh, I want to share this uh, important story about this great Baltimore fire in 1904. Some of you might have heard about this fire. This is a big fire that involves uh, a uh, land area of uh, about 55 hectares is like at least like a uh, 55 football fields, uh, which is very large. More than 1,000 buildings were burned during this fire. Now, because it's such a big fire, the Great Baltimore, the Baltimore uh, Fire Service Department was not able to fight the fire alone. So they actually sought help from many fire resources, fire departments from other cities, including like from Washington, New York. They actually uh, bring the fire engines, the uh, firefighting equipment uh, by train. So they took a train all the way to Baltimore and, and helped to fight the fire. But then despite all these additional resources that came to their aid, they were not able to help because it was said that one of the main reasons because it was the fire hose on the fire engine couldn't fix into the fire hydrant. The threads, the diameter of this hose uh, and the hydrants were different. And what was the reason for that? because there wasn't a standard. So every city was buying, adopting different types of fire uh, fighting equipment. And because they get from different manufacturers and the different manufacturers want to protect their, their business, right? So they want to do something different. So um, they manufacture different sizes of the uh, uh, fire hose and uh, hydrants. So such that this created a problem. When resources are required to be supported from city to city, when they go there, they will not be able to support. So exactly like this great Baltimore fire. So what happened was after the fire, the National Fire Protection Association said, let's adopt a national standard for, for the fire hydrant connections. So if we relate this back to our organizations uh, in terms of security, we need standards also. If you got different standards, for example, your card access for, for your cards, then when you move from one city to another city, you realize your card cannot work. So it is important that the head of security, the CSO, establish some policy standards to say um, throughout the enterprise, every site, every country will have to use the same format of a card. Okay? Or else, when uh, staff travel to another country, you will be issued another card. So that will be waste of resources. Um, the efficiency will drop. Okay, so there's three industry levels, national, regional, international, and of course, these are some of the key players. I'm sure you can name many more, but these are some of the familiar uh, uh, players here. So ISO is one of the most uh, recognized one. ISO provide equal footing of members, meaning to say every country has got one vote. I'm not sure whether any one of you is involved in ISO. So if you are involved, then you will be able to speak for the security industries. And I encourage you to participate in uh, some of these uh, uh, standards, uh, right? whether through ACs uh, or through directly through ISO. So the best way to, to influence some of these standards is to get yourself involved. 
Right, so ISO depends on market demand. Uh. ISO do not just come up with your standards. Okay, uh, they will depend on demand. If there's a demand, they will work on it. And ISO standards is based on consensus. Everybody needs to agree to the standards, the specs, and it's also voluntary participations. Right, the ISO organization do not pay the participants any amount of money, so it's voluntary. And ISO has got a worldwide applicability. It's not just for one country, it's for worldwide. So NCS, NCS is specifically more for US context. Uh, why this is brought out here? Because ACS primarily is a uh, based in US, is a US organizations, non-profit organizations. Therefore, it has adopted, uh, it has a, a, a work with this NCS, American National Standard Institute, huh? Uh, which is actually the clearinghouse for the American National Standards. So ACS is uh, accredited by NCS uh, to be a SDO. SDO means a Standards Developing Organization. It can develop standards. Like the standards I just uh, mentioned, these are workplace violence, right? And uh, active assailant. So that is one of the standards developed by ACS. Okay? And it is cleared by NCS. So therefore you will see the logo. Uh, of uh, NCS uh, in, in this particular standards. So other than standards, you have guidelines. ACS develop both standards and guidelines. No guidelines is something uh, of a lesser degree of adoptions. You, you may make reference to you, you may not want to fully comply with it. It just serves as a guidance. So these are the three examples. Now, uh, let me just go back, sorry, let me just go back to, okay. Okay, so this, this, this four guidelines, in fact, is the study materials. If you are preparing for a CPP exam, these are the four guidelines you should refer to. And as a member, earlier on I asked you, how many of you are members? I think 50, about 50% 50 of you are members, ACES members. You can go into the ACES website, download it for free. So if you are not a member, I encourage you to join as an ACES member. You can download these documents, these standards, and many more for free. And you can use it to prepare for your exam. Now, these are the three standards you need for your CPP exam. Okay, so again, also you can download it from the ACES website. As I mentioned, the workplace violence and active facility uh, 2020 has been released, uh, updated just uh, a few weeks ago. This CSO is uh, the earlier one I mentioned. So, what is the CSO standard? If you are, if your organizations want to establish this CSO, a uh, head of security kind of uh, a structure, you can refer to this CSO standard. It is basically an organizational model. It provides a comprehensive, integrated, and consistent security and risk strategy. So you notice here one of the keyword emphasis, emphasis here is talking about risk. So CSO is basically just a concept descriptor. So you may not want to call it CSO. Your, your company may want to call it something else. It can be like even a CRO, head of security, something else. But the concept is there. Okay. So if you refer to these standards, there will be things like key competencies and skills, responsibilities required of this role, the CSO role. You can refer to it then you can uh, make use of the content here to help you to establish this role for your organizations. We also talk about the, the experience that is required of this person, the applications. Um, it recommends like advanced education and degree. Note that as a standard, it do not spell out specifically what is the degree. It, it just mentioned it's a degree. Okay? And it also has got an emphasis on the lifelong learning and continuous development professional development. So this can like suggest uh, things like talking about certifications. So if you've got a certification like CPP, then this, this will be very relevant in this context. We also give suggestions on compensations and uh, give you a model position description. So it's like a sample JD is given to you. So this is just an example of uh, standards. This. So if you decide not to join uh, as an ACES member, you can always buy it from the ACES store. So this is just a um, screenshot what I gotten from the ACES website. So these are the seven standards and guidelines you can use for your exam reference. 
management system standards. Okay, so another important standard is this management system standards, which is the most famous one, is the ISO 9001. Okay, so benefits of course is a bench, benchmark systematically help you to uh, force the organization to identify problems and solutions. You use this PTC approach. Uh, any security organization or any company that adopt this uh, ISO 9000 or this management system uh, will demonstrate to the customers uh, that they have a system in place. So you gain um, customer confidence. Okay, so I give you one example of management system which is very relevant to private security company. Okay, so instead of going for ISO 9001, you can adopt this uh, management system um, standards. So the scope talks about things like risk assessment. Your organization needs to have a risk assessment framework. They talk about the structural requirements, then meaning the organization structure, what your, how your organization should be structured, how your operations and your implementation should be like. You also even talk about you need to have a occupational health and safety. You need to have safety risk assessment for the work activities. Okay, and how, how can you do the performance evaluation? You need to have a performance evaluations. You see, it covers quite a wide scopes and it is very relevant for security service provider. So if you want to uh, demonstrate to a client that you have got a good management system, I think this will be very relevant. Okay. ISO 9000 is something that is also useful, but it's more general. Well, this is more contextualized for security uh, uh, providers. Okay, six tips. Okay, um, let me quickly just cover these six tips to pass the CPP exam in 90 days. Now, uh, six tips. First, know your burning desire. Ask yourself why you want to take this CPP exam. So once you know the why, it will help you to propel yourself to, to take the exam. Okay, so next is who. Art and science of excellence, I have shared uh, to many people before, you want to excel in something, learn from people who have done it before. This is called the modeling, learn from others. So you can check with other people, your friends who have taken from uh, CPP before, ask them what did they do, okay? what have they done, learn from their mistakes, learn from other successful CPPs. You set your goals, pass the exam in 90 days. Why 90 days? Because based on the survey I've done, I noticed that um, Many people have actually passed the exam in 90 days. Of course, there are some who pass it in 120 days, five months, and some who have done it in one month. But majority of whom has actually done it in 90 days. So this is a target I recommend. In fact, this is also, uh, 90 days is also uh, uh, the number of days I have uh, studied previously when I prepared for my CPP exam. So get the resources, as I mentioned, POA is the most important. Go for POA. Buy the POA, borrow from your friends. Right? Uh, standards and guidelines is also highly recommended. And all these resources go to acsonline.org, Prometric Test Center. Now, all exam is administered online through Prometric Test Center. So, one of the other common questions people have been asking me uh, of date uh, due to the COVID 19 is the test center open? Now, this is the link. You can take a screenshot, you check it out whether the Prometric Center and your area is it open already. Right? So if it's open, then you can contact them to schedule your exam. Okay, come up with a study plan, the timeline, it is important every week, how many days are you going to, to study, weekends, how much time you want to study. Generally, people will spend one to three hours to study in the weekdays and uh, double or triple the time uh, in the weekends. Okay. Uh, how? Study strategies. I also highly recommend you research on using some of these study strategies like memory intention techniques, which actually I use a lot when I prepare for my CPP and my other certification program. Also, exam strategies. Knowing the knowledge is not enough. Find out how do you tackle exam questions. Okay, there's some uh, techniques, some of these things you need to know when you prepare for exam. Lastly, get coach, attend a training program. Now, this tutorial is a, a one hour session. There is so much I can share in one hour. So um, you may want to attend a full program, a review program that will provide you more information.
Okay, so if you are interested to also um, hear about this, how to pass certified protection professional exam in 90 days, this, this was actually a webinar I've done just a few weeks ago. And it's a 45 minutes webinar, you can find it uh, in YouTube. In fact, you can just go to YouTube, you type how to pass certified protection professional exam in 90 days. I will be sharing with you more tips. And you can also hear from uh, Melvin Farm, which is a triple crown. Triple crown basically means you got CPP, PSP, and PCI. Okay. Yeah, so Inchon was asking how, how is CPP certification exam conducted. So you had to book for the exam at a Prometric Test Center. Okay, so it's a lot online system. So once you complete the exam, uh, the, it's an MCQ questions, you click submit, your result will be revealed to you on the spot. Okay, this is how it works. So that is the end. I come to the end of today's tutorial. I, I want to thank every one of you for spending your Saturday morning or Friday evening for joining me.